welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Susan Peters and Jim Crickey, who are the filmmakers behind the film, Can You Hear Us Now? which you can see as a part of our upcoming festival programming. The in-person screenings begin September 21st and run through September 26th. The streaming online portion of our festival begins September 27th and runs through October 3rd. All the information you need about ticketing, scheduling, descriptions, and upcoming events can be found on peacefilmfest.org and we also encourage you to follow us on social media for the latest updates. And now let's welcome Susan and Jim. Hello. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Hi Susan and Jim. So Susan, tell us about the film. Um, so Can You Hear Us Now is um, a film about um, the personal impact of state level politics, essentially. Um, it focuses on Wisconsin. Um, mostly through the stories of some unforgettable women in the 2018 midterm elections. Um, two of them are running for office um, in, for state assembly, um, Jenny Estrada and Rebecca Clark, who are pretty unforgettable. They're, they both have really huge challenges um, in their lives, but also in their specific districts. Um, Wisconsin is a notoriously gerrymandered state, so that's part of the story. Um, and um, the other two women are citizen activists who are raising the alarm about voter suppression and really about how badly Wisconsinites are, have been represented by the state legislat legislators um, in, in recent years. Um, so running through the film is the story, which is quite dramatic of how Wisconsin got where it is. Um, uh, what happened over the previous decade in terms of voting rights and laws that um, um, allowed legislators to just change the rules when they lost, um, which is you'll see in the story. But it also, I think um, something we've been talking about a lot lately is um, it also is showing the story of what's happening right now in states all over the country. So. There are a lot of laws being passed in um, almost every state um, or being proposed, they have not passed, um, to restrict um, who can vote um, or intimidate voters. And that's um, something that we kind of see through the film where that came from and how it works and how it impacts how people are represented um, by their elected officials. Well, Susan, you you touched on, on the importance of this story. But I was wondering, Jim, how were you both attracted to this story? And, and what was the approach that you decided to take in telling it? So yeah, <clears throat> we mostly live in New York, uh, but spent a lot of time in Wisconsin because Susan is from Wisconsin. Um, and uh, that's where we shot the film. Um, and over the last decade, Wisconsin has passed uh, many laws that restrict voters' rights. As Susan was just saying, um, they have one of the strictest voter ID laws in the country. They are also considered to be one of the most gerrymandered. So we wanted to look into this and you know, some of the other changes that have happened. Um, and I, I, you know, I think the story is important because we need to understand how gerrymandering and restrictive voting laws really impact our democracy. Um, what, you know, just to see what it looks like and to dig into four or five people's lives so you can see how, how it affects them. And, you know, as watching the film, uh, I'm in a position as a programmer, uh, and particularly for, for this festival, I've seen a number of films about the importance of civic participation. But, um, but what do you think will surprise the average person, maybe who's not as, you know, not following this as closely about what you discover and what you learn in the course of making this film? Sure. Um, I think the thing that was interesting to us and hopefully for anyone who watches the film 
uh, the main characters, Jenny, Rebecca, Sheila, Sheila, and Molly were all fighting uphill battles. And it's just inspiring mm -hmm. to see the, them fight for what they think is right. We spent about four months filming in their communities and the level of commitment that goes into a small political campaign or a grassroots voting rights activism uh, is just never ending. And it was just so surprising to us to see just how hard, you know, everyone knows what they're up against and just how committed they were to what they were doing is just incredible. And it was actually very hard for, for us to keep up with them because we didn't know where they would be or what they were doing and they never answered their phones because they were too busy to deal with us. Um, so, you know, I, I think that comes across in the film, just how committed everybody is. And I think the other thing I, that I would really commend anyone listening uh, to watch your film is um, that, that while we do exist within a, a largely two-party system, I think what you really walk away with your film and, and why I thought it was so instructive is that, that it's not necessarily a partisan battle. It's actually a battle for people to, to bring meaning to what representative democracy is supposed to be, how it's supposed to function. Um, and could you, could you speak a little bit to, you know, to how you were able to uncover that? Sure, I mean, I think one of the driving forces at the center of the film is in our main character's life is uh, assembly candidate Jennifer Strada is justice. She's a working class single mother with five children who feels her elected officials are not listening to her needs. She feels disenfranchised. And I think something viewers can come away you know, from her story and it's, it's obvious, but not maybe not to everyone is, is to just really follow local politics. Um, to know what's happening in your community, to, you know, don't just follow national politics. Who are your representatives? What are they doing? What are they voting for? Is, is that serving your needs or is that serving somebody else's special interests? Um, so, yeah. And it's know. not easy to follow. I mean, I think that's also one of the reasons that we made the film is that it's state politics are not well covered in um, in local newspapers anymore, and it's it takes a lot of work to to follow it and understand what's happening, and it sneaks up on you. So um, I think it it takes some work to to keep up with it. And I think there's there's also a level. You're you're right, Susan. There's there's a level of frustration that is just created by how obscure the system feels, right? If you don't, if you have a problem, you turn on your tap and your water is rusty or any kind of issue, large or small, and you have no clear path to address it, um, it just engenders this kind of frustration that we feel. And, and then I think is, is agitating so many of our communities. Um, so you've really done, um, I think you guys have really uh, done us all a favor in, in um, following these women and showing this, this story so clearly. And that brings me to, uh, in thinking about that, it, it brings me to why we were attracted to the film. The mission of our festival is, is not just simply to bring uh, compelling stories, although that's a big part of it, but it's to you know inspire people or to provide them with tools or models that they can take back into their own lives into their own communities to make the world a more peaceful and just place. And certainly following the model and the inspiration of the women that you follow uh, falls into that. And I'd just be interested to, you know, to hear what you feel about what you hope will happen when people watch this film. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think what we hope, one, is that they will walk away. And we've we've heard this from a lot of people, especially who aren't in Wisconsin, where they walk away from this and say, oh my God, what's happening in my state? What's happening in, you know, who, it, it's kind of, it does motivate you to do a little research and figure out what's happening around you. The, the other thing is, you know, something that Jim touched on is, you know, sometimes um, it's easy to be cynical or it's easy to feel just overwhelmed and say, you know, it's, um, I already know, how this vote 
is going to how this election is going to go. Um, and so maybe I'll go and vote. Um, maybe I won't. Um, but um, realizing how much work people can do and what kind of community gets built, even if you're not going to win a race, it still makes a huge difference. Um, and the fact that there are people who recognize that um, and, you know, it's inspiring to say you still need to come together as a community. You still need to get out there and talk to people. And it makes a huge difference, even even when it's not going to result in, uh, you know, a win on that particular race. Well, I think that's a really important point. And before I throw it back to Nina, I really want to underline that. Uh, yours is not the only documentary that we've had focused on Wisconsin politics that, that came to that same conclusion to try and reinforce with folks that democracy is not a binary. It's not about winning or losing. It's about participating and, and, and finding, and I think it's at the root of our conception of peace, which is not an absence of conflict, but a way, a respectful and dignified way of processing our conflict together, which is inevitable. And, and when you have a system where, where we have at least that sense of, of mutual uh, respect and, uh, and caring for our communities, we can work on we can work through our differences and respect them through that process. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so tell us how. Uh, and, and I completely agree with with Kelly. And your point was very well taken and and so important and uh, you know relevant in every single local uh, locality in every local race. Um, and so important for people to pay attention to it. And as you said, so difficult in many cases to find out that information. So um, it is part of our responsibility as citizens to, uh, to participate in, uh, in our democracy to, so, that, so that those things that we, you know, that we care about, those things that impact every person's lives are addressed by our, uh, you know, by our communities, uh, whether it's elected officials or on a on a community basis. So, how can audiences support this film and this and your work? And uh, tell us a little bit about what's coming up for you for you two. Excuse me, we have a yes, a Mr. Loper. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, um, how? So in terms of what's coming up next, I'll, I'll flip those around. Um, we're, we're actually in sort of the research phase of our next film, so there's not a lot to talk about there yet. Um, uh, but what there is a lot to talk about is what we're doing with this film. Um, so we're really focused um, this year, the next 12 to 18 months really, on sharing this film. And I think um, we're talking about it right now ahead of people watching the film. But um, I think once people see it, you realize that after watching it, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and so uh, it, it really sets the stage for a lot of conversations about civic participation, about democracy, about you know, all of these things that we're talking about. And so we're trying to make it, make sure that it's available um, to communities. We're doing community screenings, um, uh, mostly virtually. Um, Bullfrog Films, uh, our amazing partners are helping to get it into um, classrooms um, because it really is a great kind of lead into a lot of conversations about state politics. Um, so um, you can see all of the information about how to do that. And if you wanna do a screening um, on our website, 12letterfilms.com. We also um, are still doing publicity around it and a lot of work around these screenings. So we're still, as you know, most independent filmmakers always fundraising. So you can always um, help out with that on our website as well. But um, we're really just, and it's available on Amazon and, and video. video. Um, Hopefully um, more coming soon. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's out there. Um, we really just wanna have as many people see it and talk about it um, as we can, um, especially in this year, which is um, a year when all of the district lines are being drawn in states around the country. And then next year we have um, midterm elections coming up again, and you know a similar 
issue with, you know, particularly women running for office who have a, a whole set of challenges um, and people running in um, gerrymandered districts, just trying to understand what those candidates um, are going through and need regardless of their party. Well, thank you for that. We are uh, definitely going to be following your progress, uh, Susan and Jim. And uh, part of that is to ask everyone watching to go to 12letterfilms.com and check out uh, their present projects and future projects. And thank you again, Susan and Jim. Uh, this has been a great conversation. Uh, you can see, can you hear us now? as part of our in-person screenings running from September 21st through September 26th, or catch up with it in our virtual screening section beginning September 27th and ending October 3rd. All the information about the upcoming festival is available at peacefilmfest.org. Thank you again, and we'll see you at the next GLOW.